Hey guys, this is my last day here in Kuala Lumpur. Happy March. This is this month's travel, income, expenses, and kind of life update and report from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Let's jump right into it. All right, hey everyone, so happy March. This is my February 1st to the 28th income report, travel report, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this photo was taken here at my Airbnb, which I'm actually sitting at right now here in Kuala Lumpur for 25 bucks a night. This is the nicest place I've stayed at anywhere. Rooftop pool, gym, in the city center. Uh, it's just a really nice place. All right, so I actually started this month in Chiang Mai and I love it in Chiang Mai in February. It's one of those places where it is underrated in February. Everyone comes for high season, which is November, December, January. They stay for the Nomad Summit, and then they're like, okay, it's almost burning season. Let's get out of here. Where's everyone going? So this year, a lot of people are going to Bali. A lot of people are going to Da Nang in Vietnam. But here's the thing is burning season doesn't actually start until March. I think a lot of people prematurely leave Chiang Mai, even though it's still a really nice time in February uh, just because you know one day this the air would kind of get start getting bad or honestly it's more anticipation other people are leaving people get excited so instead of stick, sticking to routine and enjoying Chiang Mai in February a lot of people just leave prematurely or early this year I actually left on February 18th even though I would have liked to stay another week or two mainly because my visa had just ran out and I could have extended for another 30 days but since I've been in Thailand since October, I didn't want to risk having six months on my tourist visa because Thailand is starting to crack down on people staying six months or longer on tourist visas, even if you have the proper visa, even if you have the multiple entry tourist visa, which is technically good for between six and nine months. It's silly, but that's just what's happening. So now what I do is I stay for five months, a year or less on my tourist visa and it's fine. So, came to Kuala Lumpur uh, for the last two weeks, and I was here with the German girl that I've been dating. If you've been following my journey with my blog uh, since November, uh, we met just before Loi Katong in Chiang Mai, and we've been meeting up every month since. We met up in um, Bangkok for a few days. We met up down in the islands, Koh Phangan, Koh Tao, met up again <laughs> a bunch of times. And here we are in Kuala Lumpur, and she actually just went to the airport like 20 minutes ago so i'm here in kl for a few more days alone um but you know this is kind of the hard part about being a nomad is this our life is i mean one hand we have so much freedom to go anywhere in the world the other hands we're not really settled in one place i think things would be different if we had met you know in california if we met in germany where she's from uh, but now she's on her way to vietnam to basically backpack for a month and then to Japan to also travel, and then to New Zealand to do a, a work uh, and travel visa. And I'm gonna be going through Sri Lanka and then to Europe. So we're definitely not gonna see each other for at least three, four, five months or so. So uh, we'll see what actually happens. But you know, this is kind of the life, um, ups and downs of being a nomad. But it's been a really good month. Um, it's been good hanging out, but also you know having a normal routine again. Uh, we had a great gym here. We watched a lot of Netflix. I kind of just caught up uh, on normal life. I didn't actually spend that much money this month, uh, even though I'm living in this nice place. Uh, the first half of the month I was in Chiang Mai, so I had my normal life. And then here in KL, things are pretty cheap. So as I said, this Airbnb is 25 bucks a night. That's including cleaning and the fees. And because she's German, she insisted on splitting everything with me 50-50 to keep everything fair, which I appreciate. So... I really was only spending $12 a night staying here. Our gym was free because it's part of the hotel. We were cooking a lot because uh, we both miss cooking and uh, eating at home. And most days we just went out to you know, the mall to walk around, get some coffee. Uh, we would watch a movie, we'd come home and watch a movie. So we didn't really spend that much money. Food is super cheap here in uh, Kuala Lumpur as well, really good. Uh, but aside eating great food, uh, I also did a couple of fun things. I normally just put it under a miscellaneous, like going to the indoor trampoline park in Chiang Mai. Uh, and lots of money under the coffee category because I love going to cafes. I love drinking coffee. Here I am with my good buddy Chris. 
uh, shout out. He's in Vietnam now and he's going actually back to the U.S. for a few months before going down to Colombia. So we are on different paths as well, but it was fun catching up in Chiang Mai. And we're going to reunite again next December uh, for in Chiang Mai for the next high season and for the next 2020 Oh my God, 2020 Nomad Summit next January. It's probably going to be January 18th again, same as it's been you know, four years in a row now, five years now I think we're on. Uh, but what's really great is even though I was really busy in January with the Nomad Summit, in February, I kind of just chilled a lot. I made sure the videos uh, got edited correctly and uploaded, made sure all the photos from the Nomad Summit got uh, uploaded as well. Uh, lots of cool photos from there. Uh, you can check it out on nomadsummit.com or on our Facebook page or wherever you want to hang out. But what's uh, really cool is even though I didn't actually work that much um, or take on new projects, I was able to make enough passive income through a lot of the things I've done in the past. So I have a couple of dropshipping stores set up. I still have my ebooks. I have my um, just different streams of income. Here's a couple screenshots of each. Uh, here's one of my dropshipping stores. We started a bunch with partners, or I started a bunch of partners a few months ago, and a lot of them are starting to make some money. So I'm pretty happy. We're gonna scale this up. Um, but right now, this is one of the stores making that made three thousand two hundred dollars in uh, sales last month. And actually, we have three stores that are making this much. So all together, well over ten thousand dollars now. Uh, but it's they're all split with the partners. Here are some book sales from twelve weeks in Thailand, as well as life changes quick. Uh, some uh, income from my Udemy courses, which is all passive because you see my promotion activity is zero, as well as my YouTube channel and a bunch of other random things that all add up to about $5,000. And it's way less than it was last month, but at the same time, I haven't been taking on new projects or working on new things. Uh, so expect this to keep going down because to be honest, I'm kind of just going to be coasting for the next probably a couple of months while I'm traveling. Uh, summer Euro trip 2019. I'm going to Sri Lanka tomorrow. Uh, I'm just going to backpack basically as a traveler. And then I'm going to Grand Canary to catch up with my buddy David Vu, hop on the Nomad Cruise, see all the people there. And then I'm going to be traveling around Europe. So keep in touch, see what happens. Uh, we'll see where life takes us. This is the beauty as well as the burden of being a digital nomad or being location independent is we have all the choice in the world. And I think I'm kind of tired standing still. So let's explore a bit. Let me know where you're going to be, if you're going to be the same cities or countries. So maybe we can meet up. And that's it. I'll see you uh, next month. Good luck with everyone. <laughs> good luck with everything. And whew, it's going to be a, a good month. See you guys.